Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to Wilderness Wargaming. So if you're like me, you've been in the hobby for many years, and every time you go to a new game store, it's a new experience with new people. But some folks, despite being there for a long time, still do some things that maybe we really don't want to see at the game store. And if you're new to the hobby and you're going to a game store for the first time and you encounter some unusual characters, you might want to know what's just a little off the beaten path and what sort of things you really just shouldn't do at the game store. So stay tuned. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notifications bell for more great content from Wilderness Wargaming. Number five, make sure it is a game store. Now, sometimes major chains are pretty easy to tell whether they're a game store or not, but if you're talking about local stores, it may not be obvious. Usually the best thing to do is look up the game store on the internet first and look first at the ones that come up with the word games in the title. This is usually the easiest way to figure out whether or not the store has a significant amount of gaming content. Some do and some don't. Often stores that are labeled comics and cards, like the ones down at the bottom left, really only have costumes, comics, collectible cards, things like that, and not so much in the way of the games. However, you may find some gaming stuff in some of the larger ones. By contrast, gaming stores such as the ones at the top right may or may not have comics and things like that. Generally speaking, the larger the physical footprint of the store, the more likely you are to find things other than whatever its name advertises. Where it's most important to do this is when the game store's name doesn't make it obvious at all, such as the Drunken Dwarf or the Dragon's Lair. So do a little research, especially if you're out of the way and maybe having to drive 20 or 30 minutes to get there. You might save yourself quite a bit of time and a little bit of gasoline. Number four, intruding. When you get to the game store, you're likely to see people sitting around tables with their own dice, play mats, cards, game books, whatever it is they need, playing games. Please don't go over and pick this stuff just to check it out. They really don't like that because it's theirs. It's not the store's. The store stuff will usually be on the shelf in a wrapper with a price tag, brand new. If you see something right next to somebody that's brand new with a price tag, just ask if it's theirs or the store's. They may have picked it up because they're intending to pay for it later and don't want it to get bought before they leave. Or the store might have just put it in that particular place and that happens to be where near they're sitting. Just ask. If you're interested in the game they're playing, wait till they seem to be at a good breaking point, going to the bathroom or whatever, and then just inquire when they're not in the middle of the action, what they're doing. They'll usually be happy to tell you. So, just once again, remember not to touch their stuff, especially delicate objects such as plastic miniatures that are well-painted. <clears throat> Warhammer. People don't like it when uninitiated people, or even their opponents, pick up their models and move them around and then accidentally break off a sword or an antenna or something like that from their carefully assembled and painted model. It's just not good form, so don't do it. Number three, creeping. And speaking of bad form, don't go up to people at the game store just because you find them attractive and start talking to them out of the blue. It's usually pretty obvious what you're up to, not just to them, but to everybody else. And they may be underage, and they might have a dad that doesn't like it very much. Even if they're not underage, they aren't probably there for that sort of attention, they're there to play games or paint, just like everybody else. So, if a friendship or a conversation happens to strike up naturally, by all means go with it. But don't seek out whoever you think is best looking and insert yourself into whatever they're doing. By the same token, if you happen to be the relatively good looking person, don't insert yourself into what other people are doing looking for attention. Believe me, there is nothing more irritating than being in the middle of trying to explain how you're going to allocate your fire in a Warhammer 40,000 game and have someone in their brand new cat costume come over and insert themselves into the middle of your conversation by dancing around and giggling and wagging their fake cat tail in your face. Number two, pointless arguing. Once you do start playing at the game store, keep in mind that the store is a game store and it's there for people to enjoy their hobbies at. It is not the local debate club. And that also that the people there are the customers of the owner, not of you, and the owner would like very much for those people to spend money in their store. Please don't drive them away by arguing about things like politics, sports, religion, or having lengthy and time-consuming arguments over the rules, especially minor points in a game that is not about a tournament anyhow. If it is about a tournament, call a judge to adjudicate the difference. If it's not, find a way to resolve it. 
If you're in charge of the game, running the game, then your word is final. If somebody else is in charge of the game as the Dungeon Master, their word is final. If it's a competitive game like Warhammer 40,000, if all else fails, roll off with the higher die result winning the argument. And above all, don't get into lengthy arguments about which version of a game is better. Everybody likes something different, and some of us are not even old enough to remember the earliest editions of some games. Number one, smelling like a barnyard. Now, being overweight, wearing a fedora, or having a beard are all pretty normal things, even if we don't particularly care for some of them. I mean, heck, I could seem to lose a few pounds myself. But make sure that no matter what, you show up showered, and that you used soap, and that you put on deodorant afterwards. Brushing your teeth is also a good idea, too, and your clothing should have been laundered also with soap and dried properly. If it wasn't folded and it's a little wrinkly, well, we can deal with that. But if you're showing up at your local game store and you see a sign like this on the door, then there's been a problem with it. Believe me, people like this are common around game stores, and you do have to understand that sooner or later you're going to run across one. But if you think that this applies to you, well then, I'm sorry. If the shoe fits, wear it. You need to start acquiring some of those products and engaging in some of those behaviors I just mentioned. Otherwise, please just don't come to the game store. It's really not fun for anybody if you can't take care of yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video and that your first or next trip to the game store is a lot of fun. Once again, please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notifications bell for more great content from Wilderness Wargaming.